This video was brought to you by CuriosityStream. It's only a few weeks until we find out who will be the next resident of number 10. Right now, Liz Truss is the favourite, and it seems more and more likely as the days go on that she'll be leading the country through one of its most difficult periods for decades. So with this in mind, let's take a look at why Truss is in such a good position right now, and why she's looking likely to win. As we see it, Truss's current lead can be put down to three main reasons. The first is her relatively good performance in the debates. The second is her appeal to the right of the party. And the third is her economic position. Let's take a deeper look at each of these in turn. So starting with her performance in the debates. It was undeniable before the contest that Truss was a popular politician amongst the Tory membership. According to Conservative Home, the only Tory politician more popular than her was Ben Wallace, which is not too surprising given that he was the Defence Secretary at the time of war in Europe. However, despite her popularity amongst the membership, it's also well known that she's not exactly been the best when it comes to public speaking and debates. The most obvious incident for this was her well, awkward speech to the Conservative Party conference in 2014, when she was the Secretary of State for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs. I know everyone on planet Earth has seen these clips before, but let's indulge it once more. At the moment, we import two-thirds of all of our apples. We import nine-tenths of all of our pears. We import two-thirds of our cheese. That is a disgrace. In December, I'll be in Beijing opening up new pork markets. Unfortunately for Trust, this wasn't her only gaffe. Early on in the leadership race, she actually got herself lost trying to leave a room that she was making a speech in. The point is that even though these were isolated incidents, in the mind of the public, she's an ineffective, gaff-prone communicator. So when the debates rolled around, there was a widespread expectation that Sunak would have the upper hand and would be able to use the debates to improve his standing amongst the membership. After all, Sunak had apparently proved a quite slick communicator during his time as Chancellor. The thing is though, it's easy to be popular with the public when what you're announcing is that you're giving away huge sums of money. When Sunak was in hot water earlier in the year, however, he seemed to get quite snappy. Basically, the newspapers revealed that Sunak's wife was a non-dom and had avoided around £20 million in tax in the UK. After staying silent on the subject, Sunak came out to say that to smear my wife to get at me is awful, and that the attacks were unpleasant and unfair. Now, a debate can be had about whether these attacks were indeed unpleasant and unfair, but Sunak's reaction is far from what you'd expect from a good communicator. Not discussing the issue and hitting back at the press for it being reported isn't really a winning strategy. Our point is that while there certainly were signs that Truss was a bad communicator, there were signs that Sunak was a bad communicator too. So the expectation that Sunak would trounce her in the debates may not have been as sensible as once assumed. And while Truss's performance in the early debates wasn't great, she definitely improved, and Sunak was the one who came out badly. The most notable debate for this was the BBC leadership debate, where Sunak actually interrupted Truss 20 times in the first 12 minutes. Truss spent the debate largely defending her economic policies. Polling after the debate suggested that 47% of Conservative voters thought she won, and only 38% thought that Sunak won. Clearly, Truss performed a lot better at the debates than first assumed. So, moving on to the second reason why Truss is ahead right now. She has a large appeal to the right of the party. This is something that was always sort of known about Truss, especially given her hot takes on woke issues. 
Truss has been a big supporter of Boris Johnson and has backed his plan for sending channel migrants to Rwanda. She's actually already committed to maintaining the policy and has said that she would reform the European Convention on Human Rights because of what she's called mission creep, basically that they've overstepped. On trans issues, Truss has stated that she wants to protect single-sex spaces and, as Equalities Minister, she'd even looked into how to reform the Gender Recognition Act, something for which she was dubbed the Inequalities Minister. Truss has also endeared herself to the Brexiteer right. She negotiated a number of trade deals, such as a trade deal with Japan, in her role as International Trade Secretary, and has been conspicuously hawkish on the Northern Ireland Protocol. So, despite her being a Remainer in the 2016 EU referendum, she has managed to pick up the right wing of the party via her documented support for Brexit. While Sunak actually backed leave in the referendum, he just hasn't managed to persuade the party of his ardent Brexiteer credentials in the same way. Perhaps this is because he was only in Cabinet for a relatively short time in comparison to Truss, so her support was much more visible. Either way, Truss has essentially monopolised the support of the Tory right, and there's apparently little Sunak can do to change that. Lastly, Truss has managed to present herself as the more optimistic candidate when it comes to the economy. Sunak started his campaign by trying to present himself as a fiscal realist, arguing that tax cuts couldn't happen until we've got inflation under control. Truss has instead promised to focus on improving the UK's lagging growth by cutting taxes and refinancing the national debt. While Sunak has changed his tune slightly more recently, promising to slash taxes by 20% by the end of the decade, this was, quite literally, too little, too late. The country is going through a rough period right now, and it's unsurprising that the candidate who promises to make things easier by lowering taxes is doing better. Sunak's fiscal realism just didn't go down that well. So it seems that Truss is definitely the favourite and that there are some reasons for this. She was underestimated on the debating front and it seems that her appeal to the right and her economic policies will help her win a substantial amount of support from the Tory membership. All of this is based on polling though, which some do doubt the reliability of. So we'll have to wait until the final results come in. If you do want to learn more about the validity of polling in this vote, then we spoke to the head of political polling at Opinion to find out how their polling works for the Conservative leadership election and what can be expected next. That video is exclusively available on our streaming service, Nebula. You've likely heard us talk about Nebula before, but give me one minute to explain why you should care. And as always with TLDR, there's three points. Firstly, signing up to Nebula gets you a ton of additional TLDR content. We have a whole bunch of videos exclusively for Nebula, including all of these full-length TLDR videos, as well as exclusive interviews and a bunch of fun videos, like our studio tour and our team attempting the British citizenship test. And that number doesn't even include the daily briefing, so there's a ton of extra TLDR every single day. Secondly, everything on Nebula is ad-free, and that's not just TLDR either, that's all of your favourite creators, like Wendover Productions, Real Life Law, Polymatter, Legal Eagle, Half is Interesting, and many others. And all of this content is ad-free, so there's no mid-rolls, and I wouldn't be here talking to you right now. Thirdly, signing up and watching on Nebula really helps the channel. Here's the maths. TLDR viewers signing up to Nebula has significantly improved our ability to monetize our content, which in turn has allowed us to begin employing more people and investing more in new technology to improve our content. Now, you might not have noticed it immediately, but you will very soon, and signing up is super helpful. So, you're convinced, right? Did I do it in a minute? Who knows, this is pre-recorded. Anyway, if you do want to sign up to Nebula, I've got good news, because we've done a deal with CuriosityStream, home to the best documentaries available online. So if you sign up to their streaming service using the link in the description, you'll get CuriosityStream for the crazy low price of $14.79 a year. And you'll also get access to Nebula, 
That's right, two streaming services for less than a dollar a month. And by the way, CuriosityStream is awesome. It contains absolutely boatloads of high quality documentaries on all kinds of topics that I know TLDR viewers are going to love. So if you want to get both for less than $15 a year, then the link is in the description. And if not, well, you can't say I haven't tried to convince you. Thanks for your support.